Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. I've got five, um, I don't know how I'd describe them. Uh, there's a slightly fat, peachy element about four of them, uh, certainly, but I don't know what the first one's going to be like. It's a Swiss wine. Uh, I usually think of Swiss wines as being uh, a bit light and uh, as cool and refreshing and as, as, as a mountain stream, sometimes with about as much flavour. Is that fair? No, it's not fair at all. There are some terrific stuff. We don't see enough of it in the UK, and um, so let's see what, what this one's like. It's called Haida, and it's from uh, the Valais, uh, Mise d'origine par Provence Valais Sion. Um, and it's made from the Savagnin Blanc grape. Let's give it a whirl. 2010. Oh, the one thing I forgot to say. It's um, Selection Collection. Collection Chandra Kurt. Chandra Kurt is a Swiss lady who, uh, yes, she does a bit of wine writing, but she does lots of other wine writing, lots of books. Uh, I think she's got she's got her own website, chandrakurt.com. Go and have a look at what she does on there. And uh, I don't know if this is the, the first wine I've seen with her. It's, certainly, it's the first one I've seen with her name on, but I don't know if it's the first wine that she'd released that's got her name on it. Well, it smells um, juicy and peachy, and I think I've probably got it in the right place with this, um, with, with, with these, uh, these other four wines. Uh, it feels like there's going to be this slightly fat, waxy, ever so slight edge of walnut, yeah, the beeswax, peach, honey. Um, it feels fresh, uh, but it also feels as if it's going to be quite full and throaty. Uh, it feels like a wine that maybe there might even be a little bit of tannin in there. And you don't normally think of tannin in, in white wines, but um, wouldn't be surprised if they did a little bit of skin contact and extracted a little bit of the tannin uh, in the process which has given it this musky walnut edge but also some tannin yeah fat no fat's the wrong word fleshy uh, it's got this fleshiness um, and it's got this peach it's got these herbal characters as well a um, bit of uh, things like fennel and quince coming in there um, and um, yeah this, uh, the, the, the fruit is, is on this peachy edge but then just when you think it might just go a bit too plump and uh, oily this herbal cleanness and fresh acidity cleans up the finish, leaves you with a rather, uh, rather interesting wine. I, I, I do like that. I like its weight. I like the fact that it's not over the top. Um, and I like it, that herbal presence. Nice wine. OK, let's uh, try the next uh, one, which is Paul Mass Valmont uh, Grenache Blanc uh, from whereabouts? It says Sud de France, but is it a paydock? Uh, is it a single vineyard? Blah, blah, blah. No, no. I, I mean, Grenache comes in, uh, there's the Grenache Gris, Grenache Noir, which is, when people say Grenache, they usually mean the, uh, the red, black version, uh, Grenache Noir. But uh, this is Grenache Blanc. Uh, same family produces wines that, that well, all the Grenache family needs need a bit of heat uh, to, uh, to to get them to ripen fully. And when they do ripen fully, they produce these these warm, welcoming styles of wines. Subtle, they usually not. Tasty, they often are. Grenache Blanc by itself sometimes lacks a little bit of freshness, so it'll be interesting to see what this one's like. First thing I get are things like honey, bit of, uh, I've talked about beeswax on the first one, bit of beeswax as well, then the fruit comes through. And there is that, uh, that bit of peachiness and a bit of pear, but there's also uh, something like really ripe citrus, um, very ripe orange in there. It smells like it's going to be, yeah, weighty, but it's not going to be short of freshness. I like it, I don't like it as much as I um, would have liked to have liked it, if you see what I mean. If you don't, well, try and explain. Grenache Blanc, I was saying, it, it's, uh, sometimes it, it, it produces these, well, it always produces big round wines. Um, what, uh, they, they, sometimes they are just a little bit too big and round. So in Roussillon, for example, they blend a bit of something like Bourboulanc in there to give it a little bit of zip and freshness. Here, it feels like rather than let it go over the top and ripe and develop all its flavours, they picked it up a little bit early, and it's not that there's any unripe flavours there, but I don't think it's quite developed uh, to its full potential. So the wine is nice, but it feels like it's just ever so slightly reined in. Uh, I would have liked to have seen them being a bit more exotic and then maybe blending something uh, with, uh, with some acidity in there to, uh, to freshen it up. So, good, but um, not great. Next one, we are in Chile, uh, and the theme in all these, uh, these last three is Riognier. So this one is um, it's called Corta, um, and uh, Corta K. I don't know um, whether it's actually called K or whatever. It's a weird thing. It says varietal on the back label, but then it says Sauvignon Blanc, Viognier Chardonnay. You look at the front, and it says actually Viognier Sauvignon Chardonnay. 65 Viognier, 26 Sauvignon Blanc, and 9% Chardonnay from the Lantouet Valley. Let's give it a whirl. It smells honest and clean, ever so slightly on the simple side. Um, there's this, uh, yeah, there's some of that nutty uh, peach kernel edge of, of Viognier. 
Um, again, I think they're coming, coming. It seems to be a peachy lineup. This uh, peach seems to be a, a common theme. Um, it, it feels like it's going to be ripe, honest, but simple. Let's see if I'm wrong. Funny, there are some elements in there that seem almost overripe, verging on the oxidised. As this um, broad, um, yes, um, old melon type of character. Uh, I. It's okay. Um, it feels like there's some bits that aren't ripe and there's some bits that are overripe and over mature. And the blend at the moment not sitting together um, in great fashion. It doesn't taste as uh, as fresh as it smells. Yay. It's it's okay. But the flavour I'm left with is just that bit stale. Let's see how we get on with Bordier Nord. Uh, Marsan Viognier 2010 uh, and it's made by the, uh, I think it's an Alan Grignon wine. Six ninety nine, and um, I don't know. I don't know how much Marsan and how much Viognier is in here. Whether it's a fifty fifty blend or not, Marsan is um, is one of the well, well the, there's three white grapes they grow in the Northern Rhone variety. Uh, Northern Rhone. Uh, there's Condria is made from Viognier, and then further south uh, you get places like Hermitage, Croze Hermitage, Saint Joseph, and the two grapes that they use there are uh, Marsan and Roussan. Roussan is the aristocratic one. Marsan is uh, a bit of a peasant, but uh, a very tasty peasant. Let's see whether it's peasant or pleasant here. Again, this smells on the simple side. Um, there's uh, the Viognier. I don't know, for me, if you put Viognier in something, I want to taste a bit of, um, I want to taste a bit of cleavage. I want to taste a bit of um, six pack, whatever analogy you're into. I want to, I want to see, I want to see sort of a little bit of mmm factor about it. I don't get uh, that here. I do get a little bit of the um, maybe the subtlety that uh, waxy walnut skin edge of uh, of the Marsan. Uh, maybe a bit of honeysuckle there. But um, let's taste it and see how we get on. It's okay. Um, it's one of those wines that uh, I think actually if you shove it on a table um, it would probably uh, be one of those bottles that's finished pretty soon because um, there's nothing there that um, that stands out as being uh, objectionable. It's got freshness, it's got this, yes the Viognier does come through with giving this little peachy peach kernel and uh, uh, a bit a bit of the, the, the nuttiness as well but um, in terms of overall character it's not it's not a majorly assertive wine. Now, I don't I don't want all my wines to come up and slap me around the face with a wet fish, but here it feels that yeah, it's just a little shy. Um, so it would be, um, it would yeah, it would go nicely with a lot of food, uh, in that it wouldn't overwhelm it, uh, but equally it wouldn't have a great deal to say for itself. Hey, um, final wine. Uh, we are on 100% Viognier, uh, for, uh, Viognier P Pédoc from uh, De Penautier. Um, sometimes it says Chateau de Penautier uh, on uh, on their wines, but I'm presuming if it doesn't say Chateau de Penautier, then it's not from their estate. I don't know. I'll, I'll just pour and sniff and shut up. And that does have some of the Viognier wobble. You know, that, that, that thing, something bursting over the top of your belt or over the top of other parts of your clothing. Um, it's, uh, it's got uh, uh, some of the peachy presence, it's got the, uh, the nuttiness, a bit of toastiness there. Um, it doesn't feel like it's going to be out there and really over the top, uh, but uh, it smells like it's going to um, deliver. And, and at um, £7.25, smells like it's going to be fair enough wine. Yeah, that's pretty decent grog. Um, it's got the weight, it's got the vanilla, it's got what I expect from a Viognier. And it's well behaved. Yes, it's got, it's, um, it's being well behaved at the moment, but it, it does feel like it's got a naughty side, a naughty, creamy, um, let's not tell the parents about this type of side to it. And um, uh, in, it, it's got more in common with, uh, with the wines of Condria than any of the other previous two that, uh, that, that, that had Viognier in there. Uh, I like it, I like its weight, um, trouble for me with, is with Viognier is sometimes it's almost a bit too loud for a lot of the food that it ends up being served with. Uh, but uh, one of my, my favourite places to have Viognier is just having it as a aperitif before, before the start of the start of the meal. It's got it's got a lot of flavour. It's got a lot of flesh. A small glass of that, and it will stimulate your appetite and uh, make you set into other things with a plum. So I'm going to call it a day on these five uh, favourites are the first and the last. So um, hey, see you soon.